Welcome back to Encore Time Master, the timekeeping app for your iPhone or iPod Touch. In this last video, we're going to discuss the setup section. One quick note, we have a built-in manual. You can tap on the manual and we recommend turning it landscape mode and then doing a little pinch to expand the text makes it easiest to read. We'll go back to setup here. Okay, the first section here is the database, and this covers our clients, projects, tasks, and expenditures. As you saw in the first videos, that we can create clients, projects, tasks, or whatever on the fly, but if you need to edit the record, you'll have to come here to do that. So let's click on the clients, and you'll see that we pop up a notice saying that we recommend that you back up your data before doing anything in these records, especially if you're going to delete stuff. Uh, we have a free application for the Mac and the PC that will allow you to back up and restore to your iPhone or iPod Touch and it will also let you export the backup data as CVS exported data for use in programs like Excel or Numbers. Okay, so let's say we were going into CVS and we could we have a new program that needs a code so we're going to add a code in here for this and that would say it was 123 now we've updated that, we hit save, now that's updated. This will also allow us to add new items here. If we wanted to add a whole bunch of new clients when we're first setting up, we could do that here and add a new client. And if you hit the edit button, it will also allow us to delete records. Now we want to note that when you delete a client, it also deletes all the time entries, expenses, projects, and tasks associated with it. So another good reason to do a full backup before you do this. And obviously, if you click on a row, it brings up the delete button. Once you hit that delete button, the data is gone. So be very careful. Okay, same works for the projects, tasks, and expenditures. We also have two functions for purging your old data. So we have one for time entries. And you can pick a date range for this. And say that we wanted to delete all our records from January 1st, 2005 through December 31st of 2005. We wanted to get rid of the whole 2005. We don't want those records in our iPod anymore. And you can choose to just select delete items for a client, a project, and a task. So we could just say purge. And since we have no data entries in here going back that far, it gives us a message that there was no entries matching that. If you had entries, it would tell you that there are 12 entries that are going to be deleted or whatever. And you press OK. OK, back to setup. Expenses works the same way. Now we're going to talk about the general settings. As I touched briefly on in the time entries, the global rate is a required field. You have to set this. As you can see, it's a required field, so we can't actually exit here once we until we put something in. And the way the rates work is that the global rate is your first rate. If you have a client and you entered a rate in the client, the client's rate will override the global rate. And if you have a project rate, the project will override the clients and the task will do above that. So you can really have flexible billing rates for your projects. Rounding we touched on in the time entries and we can round up and we could round up to the nearest minute if we wanted and if the entry on the timer was for 30 seconds it will round up to the nearest minute so it would be one minute. If we put nearest if it was 30 seconds it would round up to one minute. If it was 29 seconds it would round down to zero and obviously round down will round down so if it was 59 seconds it will round down to zero so we're going to leave that undone week starts if your week doesn't start on a Sunday you can choose a different day of the week here we're going to set it back to Sunday multi timers what this allows for is to have multiple running timers at the same time if if you need that for your business uh, our default is disabled, so if we go back in and we'll flip over to time entries here, and you'll see that if we click on the CBS, that will continue. And if we get a telephone call by this other company, we can tap on that and start timing that. It will automatically stop the other one. Now if we have multi-timers set to yes, 
enable and go back in there you can see that we can start this timer and we can also start another timer so now we have two timers running and the last mode is ask so it will prompt us to ask us what we want to do there so now we start a third timer it will say ask us if we want to just cancel out of this and not do anything or we can say yes we want to stop the other active timers and then it will start the new timer or no and it will have two timers running so that's how the various timer functions work and I'm going to set this back to disable and the time mode when you enter a time entry you can have start time, a stop time, and a duration if you only like using start and stop you can get rid of the duration if you don't use timers that's a good one to check and if you're only using timers you may want to just have a start and a duration just for easier entry so we'll look at a time entry here again and note that when you start and stop entries so if you worked from 7 15 p.m. to 8 and you took a break in between or you start you stopped the timer that and it was we'll say that our, we spent five minutes total we worked from 7.15 to 7.30 and we took a 10 minute break that it's only going to say 7.20 because it's only going to take the duration and add that to your start time so note that your stop time will never be the actual time that's on your phone at the same time okay and email settings we touched upon this in the reports the default too is for when you send yourself a HTML email you can have that in there or leave it blank if you're always constantly addressing the emails to different people the export fields of course we can turn these on and off which ones you want to see on your report and you can move the position of, of the columns last thing is strip carriage return line feed and when you're in an entry we'll go back to our CBS entry here and we'll click on the reference and if you hit the return key down here and then you have a new line here that's a carriage return line feed in between those and what will happen is if you have a spreadsheet like Excel or numbers and you import the data into that instead of the columns being nice and neatly lined up where you have that new line it will force the data all the way over to the left and your columns will be skewed so basically you want to keep the strip carriage return line feed checked unless you specifically know that your program can handle that and again this these settings are inherited from the backups if you're using our free Mac and PC Time Master Central application to do a CSV export it will also take the strip carriage return line feed and use that it will also inherits the week starting so it knows what day of the week you started and it knows your rates so uh, that pretty much wraps it up for the Encore Time Master we hope you'll love the app as much as we do and thanks for watching